Two years, 11 months, and seven days. That's how long I used my previous smartphone, the LG G6. But considering that smartphone users only keep their devices between 22 and 26 months on average, my 35 month old device was desperate for an upgrade. And that's when OnePlus swooped in and dropped their most recent flagship in my lap, the OnePlus 8. And after a month or so of daily use and frequent comparisons to my phone of yesteryear, oh boy did I realize I was missing out on some great features. Some surprised me, some kind of upset me, and some made me consider how I ever lived without them. This is my one month with OnePlus. While every other company uses the features of their devices to gain attention, OnePlus has always used the price of their devices to their advantage. And it certainly helped them. Eight generations of smartphones later, and OnePlus is still going strong in a smartphone market where the gene pool of features has pretty much become identical across every device. In my interview with tech enthusiast and Star Trek superfan Mr. Mobile, he expressed his concerns about how smartphones are becoming more and more identical, and, well, I'll let him explain it. We don't want to do a notch, we don't want to do a hole punch, or we can't do either of those things for whatever reason. So we're going to do this pop-up camera module, and isn't that fun? But that was it. That was the last bit of fun anyone had. And now that we're into hole punch cameras, and soon they'll find a way to hide it under the display so you don't even have a hole in it, it just will be invisible. We, then we will finally have achieved the, the horrible nightmare of just having a sea of rectangles that, that, that is truly boring, and then they, they will only differentiate based on color. But while the OnePlus 8 certainly matches basically every 2020 flagship smartphone spec sheet to a T, and as such might not stand out too much, it's the fact that my daily smartphone experience has been stuck in the summer of 2017 since, well, the summer of 2017. And that means I've missed out on a lot of new features and interesting discoveries entirely. For example, the OnePlus 8 doesn't come with a stock music app as streaming services like Spotify and Google Play Music become more popular. I've tried both Power Amp and Retro Music Player through the Google Play Store as decent alternatives. To get the ball rolling, let's talk about some of the most standout features I've noticed about the device. One of the best things about the OnePlus 8 is the battery life, which frequently gets me two days of use between charges again and again. And when it is time to top it off, it does so ridiculously quickly with Warp Charge 30T that you can squeeze out of the massive wall plug included in the box. 70% charge from MD in just 30 minutes. If you haven't seen my unboxing and first impressions on the OnePlus 8 yet, you can click the card in the top right corner to see me get ridiculously excited over it. But right after I stopped recording that video, I plugged both phones in and started transferring my files between the devices. The OnePlus 8 went from 39 to 97% in the same time it took my G6 to go from 74% to 100, and that's with the included fast chargers of both devices. Once the transfer was complete and both devices were all charged up, it was time to update. Oxygen OS has been pretty nice to me, and at the time of writing, it's had three updates. Actually, scratch that. Uh, at the time of writing this, it had about three updates, but now my OnePlus 8 has had about four or five, I want to say. And that's mostly because of the launch of the OnePlus Nord as well as the OnePlus Buds that just came out. So now if I ever get a pair of OnePlus Buds, I can support it. I personally use the Nova Launcher with the Flight Icon Pack for this super minimalist look. I've also noticed a major lack of bloatware compared to some carrier specific devices with the only pre-installed app I don't see myself using being Instagram. I should also note that this is the unlocked model of the OnePlus 8, not the Verizon specific model which uses their millimeter wave standard of 5G connection. And I'd show off some 5G speed tests of this device, but unfortunately I'm not in any of Verizon's 35 current 5G enabled locations across the country. One of the biggest staples of the OnePlus brand is the notification slider accompanying the power button on the right side. And I'll be honest, I almost never used the notification switch on my old iPhone 6, which gave me so many problems. But now that I have the option to use it again, <laughs> I'm surprised I went this long without one. Instead of having to shamefully pull your phone out of your pocket, wake the screen, slide down the notification bar, and tap the appropriate setting to mute the phone, a quick double click up completely silences the device. It's got a nice diamond shaped texture to the head of the switch, so you don't mistake it for the power button. The three individual stages representing ring, vibrate, and silence snap confidently into place with an audible click, alongside an individual vibration pattern to let you know just what mode you're in. But I'd be lying if I were to say a three-way switch and a great battery were the defining features of this device, no matter how satisfying the snap is when you plug it in. Man, that never gets old. But it still manages to stand out in just the right ways to set it apart from its predecessor, most notably the hole-punch camera which dots the upper left corner of the screen. 
Say what you want about it, but I prefer this way more than having a massive unibrow of a notch poke its way into the screen. But the display itself is great. OnePlus prides themselves about the HDR10 Plus support and the plethora of DisplayMate A Plus award ratings that this panel packs, and rightfully so. Scrolling feels smoother, gaming feels great, and overall it just feels more like a product of the future and almost makes you forget you're just fumbling around with a piece of glass that connects to the internet. If there's one feature that smartphone manufacturers need to carry over into the devices of 2020 and beyond, it's fast refresh rate screens. Looking at you, iPhone 12. The only issue I've seen so far is a noticeable smearing effect when transitioning from dark pixels under low brightness. And these cameras are fantastic. The three lenses allow you to get basically whatever shot you can imagine with a 16 megapixel, 160 degree ultra wide shooter on top, a 48 megapixel main sensor in the middle, and a two megapixel macro camera on the bottom. Photos aren't overbearingly saturated, but still manage to capture a good amount of dynamic range. Like all smartphone cameras, it falls apart a little in low light areas, but I've never had completely unusable photos come from this device before. Portrait mode is always fun to shoot, especially for emphasizing subjects, and macro mode is a neat addition, but you have to get really close to your subject to get sharp edges. I honestly would have appreciated the inclusion of a telephoto camera opposed to the macro camera, even if I wouldn't use it all that much. Video on the other hand somewhat falls short. Definitely usable for day-to-day -day use, and considering the vast majority of people just use video for capturing their friends doing stupid stuff for Snapchat, I can't imagine complaining about it. Tony, no! Oh, no! It's gonna drop it's it! Spilled it's spilled God, everywhere. Tony! It's spilled everywhere. I could not have been more wrong. <laughs> the OnePlus 8 is capable of shooting in 4K 60 frames per second in both auto and cine modes, thanks to the fast processor, but it can also do 1080p slow-mo at 240 frames per second, or 720p at 480. Now, if this were the absolute perfect phone, this video would be substantially shorter and not as fun to watch. In fact, it'd basically be marketing material instead of a review based on an actual first-hand experience. For example, the curved screen helps the phone fit in with today's standards, but personally just makes my thumbs hurt when reaching opposite ends of the keyboard. I've also found myself accidentally reaching too far to hit said keyboard edges and closing the app I was in, as I'm too lazy to learn gesture controls. And while the in-screen fingerprint reader is a huge step forward for innovative features, I found that it simply refuses to work sometimes, despite the screen being perfectly clean. Nothing a quick reboot can't fix, but still. There's a few more things keeping this phone from being the epitome of a 2020 flagship, which is just not present on this device. Wireless charging is only available in the Pro model of the OnePlus 8, meaning my recently purchased wireless charger is now useless, and neither device has an expandable microSD card slot, something I praised my G6 for having due to 32 gigs of storage being the norm back in 2017. For those audiophiles out there, you'll have to forego your 3.5mm audio jack, and there isn't even an adapter included in the box. Ouch. But what'll it cost you? $699 for the base model, and another Benjamin for double the storage and a RAM increase. I'll be honest, hearing that OnePlus finally broke the $700 mark means that they've basically surrendered the title of being the brand to go to if on a budget. I mean, the Pro model maxes out at a grand. But this is actually a good thing for OnePlus. They're at the point where they're confidently dancing with the Samsungs and the Huaweis of the smartphone world. And with the recent announcement of the OnePlus Nord at 399 means they're now competing with even Big Apple and the iPhone SE. So in the end, I'm proud of OnePlus for clawing their way to the top. They're in the big leagues now, with multiple device launches per generation, and that's why the OnePlus 8 is the best smartphone that I've owned so far. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a like on this video. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed below so you don't miss any future videos. Your support is exactly what keeps me motivated to keep producing content even if I'm not rolling in ad revenue. Heck, I'm not even monetized. I do it purely as a passion project, and through the generosity of companies like OnePlus sending tech my way, I can keep making videos as long as you keep asking for them. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good one.